Perfect. Thank you, everybody, for uh, jumping on and joining us for today's webinar. <clears throat> uh, my name is Joe Miller. I am the director of product here at Polarity, and uh, co-presenting me today is David Histon uh, with uh, with Mandiant. Um, and today we're going to be kind of talking about <clears throat> we're be talking about uh, who is Mandiant and what is Mandiant threat intelligence, of course, Polarity, who we are. And then we're going to kind of jump into a demo of Plarity and the Mandiant Threat Intelligence integration and kind of show the combination of them and the power of it with, uh, with vulnerabilities. With that, I'll turn it over to David. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, so I'm uh, one of the uh, product managers for the Mandiant um, Threat Intelligence specifically. And um, what I wanted to do really was just kind of start at the top um, and just talk a little bit around why um, Mandiant views threat intelligence as being so important for customers. And then you'll see how that flows through into a you know, great tool like Polarity to make your lives a lot more um, easier and also more beneficial. So starting at the kind of the, the top, so Mandiant Advantage has a, a number of kind of modules within it um, that, oops, I jumped ahead. Oops, there you go, thank you. Um, number of modules in it that have um, each have a unique kind of capability. The first one and primary one really is around our threat intelligence module. And that's about putting the power of Mandiant's expertise and intelligence right in your hands um, so that you can make much more informed decisions. It's based on the Mandiant intelligence grid, which is effectively a cloud-based uh, data lake, which enables Mandiant to be able to scale our threat intelligence and provide that through to customers, both through our kind of API and through the application itself. Ultimately, we take everything that we learn from our frontline investigations and activities, and we provide that in a either in a machine readable format, um, so that it can be consumed in a sim or in your tip, or through um, more like strategic reports that you can digest to understand all the things that are happening. One of the kind of the the, the best ways that the platform pulls together that information is in automatically building a threat profile for you, so that it creates a custom and personalized. Um, top threats list such that you can understand, okay, what are the most likely things to attack me based on my particular profile? And from that, um, we pull those elements through into a tool um, like our um, security validation or um, an automated defense to make sure that you have the prioritized information front and center as you go forward. Effectively, you can kind of think of it as having a Mandiant expert as a virtual extension of your team. So as we know, breaches are um, costly. They um, they you know used to be that it would take you know up to you know 148 days five years ago for somebody to discover that an intruder was in their account. Now you know based on what we've seen, that has come down to about kind of 16 days on average. Um, whilst that's really helpful information to be able to know, um, we also know that it's it's only the start of the investigation. At that point, once you've noticed, noticed that there's an intrusion, you really need to move quite quickly to understand, okay, how can I best like understand what the threat is, like what is happening and then where all the next steps need to come from. And so things such as kind of knowing, you know, what vulnerabilities are out there that are potentially being exploited in my environment or what are the next steps or areas that I need to jump through are vital pieces of intelligence that you need in order to um, be able to protect your environments. So what is what are kind of customers like yourselves uh, say to us as we're kind of talking to them and, and designing our products? And really, um, it comes down to like a couple of, well, four or five key things. The first one really is that everyone needs help prioritizing the threats and vulnerabilities that matter. We're all kind of overwhelmed with you know a huge amount of information and it's very important to be able to discern what is really really critical for me and my business to work on now and especially as that comes to vulnerabilities and patching it's also the case that security tools are um also getting kind of overwhelmed with you know lots of uh events and things getting pushed into them and so they also become incredibly noisy and generate a lot of you know alerts and false positives which you know has its own side effects which means that you know you can't again see the things that are most important for you and your business to focus on and ultimately customers tell us the basic question that they really need kind of answered is are we at risk and who is targeting me and based around that knowledge and having that information that means that you you know can start stop sorry guessing around like what defenses do we need in place and you know how can i set myself up to be protected and instead start working towards um being able to prepare for an attack so that you aren't always kind of in reactive and response mode 
and ultimately like as everything everyone needs things now um so you don't have to kind of dig through and try and find a huge amount of information in lots of different disparate places and piece it together so why do i guess organizations have um a threat intelligence kind of function um and what are they using and the real reason we see for that see for that is that it can ultimately reduce the burden of kind of all the problems that we just discussed kind of above um, really, it's about helping you understand why why something is really important, and then also like what what steps you can take to mitigate that, so that you and your organization can move onto the front foot. Oops, jumped in. So, um, in looking at that, it's like why how can you know threat intelligence? How does that help reduce the risk of a business? Like, what are the the things that it can provide that ultimately help drive down this risk? And the key really elements of it are that we lessen the burden on resources. So the primary objective of kind of like any security program is to be able to reduce cyber risk to an acceptable level for your business. And in order to do that, you must first kind of be able to quantify and understand like what is that risk? Current like compliance based, you know, security doesn't really provide that understanding because it applies the same approach to all organizations, kind of large, small, um, depending on whatever industry you're in, it applies the same kind of like blanket approach. And as a one size fits all approach, it really builds for kind of best case um, with no regard for how you are likely to be affected or impacted by certain things, which also means that you're not able to focus your resources kind of where you need to. So if you're informed really by knowing um, how attackers are most likely to target your specific organization and what steps they use in order to break in and get into organizations like yours, then you'll be able to develop and prepare with the right uh, risk mitigation programs to ensure that you have a responsive strategy and, and ability to detect and find those elements, as well as kind of allocate the correct um, security investments in those places that really matter. So as time goes on as well, and, and, and your landscape changes as, as more actors come on board and target your industry and or they start using new and novel techniques, your exposure will obviously kind of change and increase unless you continue to invest and understand those key areas that you need to focus in on. So an intelligence-led security program provides that um, strategic uh, line to be able to say, these are the things that we need to prioritize and invest in, and these are the actions that we need to do, based around you know the facts of what attackers are leveraging to focus in on organizations who look like you. I think one of the kind of the, the useful examples of that would be, as we know, like phishing is probably, you know, one of the most is the primary way that you know uh, attackers try and break into organizations so being able to construct a you know a phishing test exercise that allows you um based on your know, campaign data that we've seen from actors themselves and the steps that they use and follow in order to design and create those phishing emails and then also looking and following on from those things okay once they get in how do the how do they uh, navigate in your environment once they've actually got themselves in being able to uh firstly kind of like construct that same kind of phishing example send it through explain kind of where it lands and then also being able to check and see like do i have the correct um resources in place to be able to detect if something did actually get through my perimeter and also do i have the right you know um protections in place to ensure that you know those areas are covered so in terms of like how our intelligence is constructed and how we pull those things together. We have um, close to about kind of like 200,000 uh, hours of um, incident response engagements per year, which, um, which we use in a kind of a multiple ways to pull that information through to you. So what we do is, is as well as getting like the, the real time threat intelligence from customer environments, which we share by kind of our API and also through our um, UI, so you can see like what indicators are actually being associated with a specific actor, um, what vulnerabilities are they targeting and using, and how are they using it. We also are able to pull together the um, the life cycle of an attack, so that we're able to share like what tactics and procedures are currently being used against organizations such as yourself, and then how are they starting to think and navigate. Um, and leverage certain kind of weaknesses in people's defenses so that you can start to become more proactive. As well as having like over a kind of a thousand years of investigative experience means that as we, you know, 
dig into and create, you know, specific reports that are mentioning like these are the things and the mitigations that you need to have in place. These are all based on kind of real world experience. So you can rely upon those and know that they're kind of tried and tested. As an example, we're currently tracking over like 3000 threat actors. Um, so using all of our analysts to go through and, and, and monitor and see like what new steps are they, you know, employing, how are they targeting, you know, businesses like yourself, you know, what things are they putting in place so that you can be um, aware of those things and be protected against them, as well as having like a large number of kind of instant response engagements. We also have like 300 plus security researchers who are continually taking that intelligence that we get from the front lines, refining it, and making it consumable for um, customers like yourself, so that you can have a, an easy to consume and digest um, summary of the things that happen. And ultimately, the way we see that kind of working through is that, you know, we save like, you know, 7.6 billion kind of man hours or person hours per year through expert automation in terms of being able to pull those things through and make them useful. So all of this really kind of distills down to, we believe that kind of like Mandiant threat intelligence can help you prioritize your defensive actions by kind of knowing what's out there and what's coming by anticipating the threats that can be targeting you and ultimately help you increase the efficiency and, and efficacy of your SOC and your security staff. So um, in terms of like how all of these elements are pieced together, really we think of like um, all of the kind of global sensors that we have as being collections that are out there. And there are four kind of key areas that we have that pull together all the, the threats um, that we see, which means that we're able to do such things as tell you not only kind of like when we've seen, you know, an actor in a specific environments and what they have been doing, but we can also build out um, trending from telemetry information to let you know, okay, we've seen, you know, this piece of malware is, you know, currently being um, used in this country. Um, it's coming from this source and it's going to these destinations. And again, that's really useful kind of information for you as you build out the picture, as well as being able to tell you kind of like the prevalence of those pieces so that you can understand, okay, how common is this? Um, and then, you know, with regards to things like vulnerabilities, how are these actually being exploited in the wild? And then what steps can I take to protect myself against those elements? So in terms of where we piece all this thing together, so as I mentioned, so we have like um, adversary intelligence, which is a key focus of what we do, which is going out and scanning, going across like 29 countries, you know, with 500 plus analysts, all of which um, distill down 30, you know, K plus reports per year, which means that we're distilling that um, intelligence into a consumable format so that you can become better equipped to understand what are the things that are going to come at me you know relatively soon and what steps can i take place that's also backed by um machine intelligence so not only do we have analysts we also have um lots of machines that are out there so four million virtual machines going out there waiting and, and and tracking the malware as it goes through and also exploding it and understanding what steps that malware is actually taking. So as it morphs and changes, we're able to track those pieces. So that again, you can be aware of like this, this malware piece is now moving from this country to that country, and you can start to put your defenses up. Combined with all those other elements in terms of like leveraging our um, kind of in the field breach intelligence to layer in all of that element into our Mandiant intelligence grid, which is what provides our threat intelligence out to customers such as yourself. So in terms of how how customers can consume it, so how you consume it is we have our our free license, which is effectively allows you to consume um, our open source indicators that are enriched with um, Mandiant data, as well as um, a subset of our actors and profiles. So you can start to get an understanding of how our intelligence is pieced together. We also have a kind of dedicated security operations um, uh, product which is effectively our machine readable threat intelligence. So that includes all of our actors, um, campaigns, indicators. So you can start to build up a threat response picture yourself. We also have um, on top of that, you can consume our vulnerability intelligence or our, and or our um, digital threat monitoring intelligence, which allows you to understand like what threats are currently being exploited uh, in terms of vulnerabilities and what's coming down the road in terms of um, digital threat monitoring. And ultimately, if you want to have it all in one big uh, holistic package, we have our fusion package, which allows you to consume all of that, plus our kind of strategic threat intelligence piece. So as I mentioned, 
uh, the Threat Intelligence Security Operations Bundle gives you access to all those pieces. I think one of the key elements that customers get a lot of value from is the uh, MITRE attack mapping and the object graph. So really what that allows you to do is take both the kind of the indicators that we have and put them into your SIM, but also start to map out using MITRE to understand, okay, where might I be weak in my defenses and how can I start to build up detections around those areas? Then we also have um, our digital threat monitoring, which is really about, in our world, kind of seeing it as having a risk radar. So this is allowing you to look farther out into kind of the deep dark web and understand what, what you know, actors are talking about my business or specific vulnerabilities or specific tactics and techniques. Um, are they looking to sell my um, credentials um, or credentials of employees in my business so that I can start to put my defenses up around that. So we like to think of DTM as being like an early warning radar system where you start to pick up noise and chatter around threats that may be coming your way. And it allows you then again to kind of come back in and set your defenses up ready to go. Vulnerability management is um, also one of the kind of the critical pieces of the puzzle. And so we have um, recently kind of enhanced our vulnerability management offering. So we now have um, basically all of the kind of NVD um, data is pulled through into our platform. We um, have our analysts who kind of rate uh, the critical vulnerabilities. And so what that allows you to do is to start to prioritize based on the, um, the facts that we see. So whether we see something as being kind of exploited out in the wild, whether we know if there's um, you know, a lot of threats dedicated to it, whether we see lots of people um, exploiting it, and all of those pieces flow through into our risk scoring so that you can start to effectively cut down and focus on those pieces that matter. So focus on vulnerabilities that are being exploited in the wild or have POC code associated with them, ones that we see are kind of trending or are being used by specific threat actors. And so having that allows you to effectively like reduce the number of critical vulnerabilities that you need to manage from around like 90% you know, down to 5% based on those things that we can see are actually going to be important to you. We also kind of extended out the uh, the number of attributes that we track and follow for uh, vulnerability management. So we now have 17 uh, extra data points that we track, as well as support for the exploit potential score system, which really talks to like whether we see the likelihood of this vulnerability being exploited in the wild within the next 30 days. So it kind of gives you an early kind of warning radar system to say, is this vulnerability something that I need to be aware of now and I need to fix? And then ultimately our Intel Threat Fusion um, offering is the one that combines all of those pieces that we spoke about before, as well as the robust um, intelligence reportings and the strategic elements so that you can get full insight into like what's happening in your environment or in the, the threat environment and take steps to protect yourself against them. So the um, way we see kind of the best way to onboard yourself into these um, elements is to kind of start off if you want to with a free trial. Um, have a look and see like whether you you know get value out of the you know the reports that we have the indicators that we're showing some of the actors and malware so you can get a sense for those things and then move into um, using it in a in your secops as a way of getting full access to all the actors and uh, malware families that we're tracking as well as start to build out using the kind of mitre attack graph to start to uh, to pan out exactly kind of like where the threats are and how you're monitoring those then ultimately start to drive it through with your workflow and integrations so that you can start to build out and get yourself into a much more secure space. So finally, um, we are aware that um, like everyone that, you know, being um, having intelligence is kind of half of or you know three quarters of the, the story. You also need the capability to be able to do that. And so Mandiant has, um, you know, the services backed um, to be able to provide you both kind of like applied intelligence um, so you can get access to our, um, our analysts to give you insights into specific threats and things that are happening within your organization. We've also got the Mandiant kind of skills academy which allows you to skill up and get education on how, um, how to um, effectively boost your essential cyber skills. These aren't kind of like product usage classes. These are more skills development um, led by kind of our experts in the industry to educate you on all levels of you know, security processing, not just necessarily how to use the Mandiant Advantage tool. And then finally, we have the intelligence capability development, which really allows you to 
um, get true value from the threat intelligence. And so we can create, you know, custom solutions for you from like assessments, design, implementation services, which are all really designed to help you get the most out of the threat intelligence purchase that you will have. And then finally, in terms of, um, sorry, jumped ahead, in terms of um, like positioning. So Gartner kind of you know, recently reviewed the uh, Forrester Wave um, and they put us, you know, as a leader in the kind of the magic quadrant, really focusing around how uh, the acquisition um, of Mandiant by Google is going to unlock some additional um, threat intelligence capabilities, which will make us you know, a very uh, key player in the market space, which we are now, and then also like going into the future. And I think with that, I'll hand over to you, Joe. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, so to kind of give a quick just overview of Plarity, what we do, and then I'll jump into a demo. And then, of course, we'll kind of really dig into the the um, polarity and Mandiant Threat Intelligence integration and kind of the combination of, of the two tools and how it can help analysts. But um, give you an understanding of polarity and what we do. We are um, a cybersecurity tool for analysts is what we do is we connect into all the disparate data that's out there, which we know organizations have a lot, whether it's internal to your organization, such as your, your assets or maybe a spreadsheet or your Google Drive or SharePoint or some system where you keep documents to open source threat intelligence, to threat intelligence like Mandiant. Um, <clears throat> and we connect to that and provide that information to analysts to essentially move faster and have a complete understanding of what they're looking at. Um, some of the core benefits are, uh, as you'll see here during the demo, immediate knowledge. Um, as you're kind of looking at your, you're looking at information, you're going about workflow, no matter what tool you're looking at, you'll be able to get context from Polarity. Um, we help to kind of fuse all that together so you can see an indicator, um, <clears throat> a CVE, how it might how it might be um, affecting your internal systems to what might be out there um, open source wise. You'll have that full context that's there. Um, and with that, it can really help to kind of up level your team. You can improve communication. Everybody can kind of be on the same page because you're all talking about the same things. So with that, I'll kind of jump out of this and bear with me a second. We get out of here. And jump over into our, um, this is what we call kind of our, our web search, right? So Polarity works in a multitude of ways. You can search information just by coming to our webpage and typing in a quick indicator or a person's name or a threat actor or a MITRE ATT&CK framework, um, just to kind of get more context. You can come in, type in information, hit enter, and then Polarity will go and search all of your data sources that you might care about. We have um, almost, I think, 185, 190 officially released integrations. We are building more all the time, and we'll kind of get into that more. But we connect into all that data, provide that context and analysts. So as you can see here, there's a lot of data that came back, different colors. Colors are correlated to different data sources. So Mandiant Threat Intelligence is this bright red. Virus Total is kind of the pinkish. Chronicle Backstory is the purple. Um, silent push, Shodan, abuse IPDB, um, great noise, kind of have that full context from internal, external sources so you can quickly make a decision. This is just a simple, a simple Google DNS example where you can see that gray noise is classified as a riot. Mandiant, there is different information out there for Mandiant. So you can see here the search um, in Mandiant returned over 10 results. Um, you can see that the virus total has a suspicious. That's probably because this this IP address typically gets flagged with other things that that threat actors and, and different people are trying to do maliciously. So that's why you're seeing it being blocked by by Chronicle and virus total is flagging as suspicious. It's not really actually suspicious. This just tends to be associated with information a lot. Um, so you can just get that just by looking at what we call our, kind of our summary information, which is the high level data. And then as an analyst, you can drill into all these. If you want to drill in and see more from Chronicle Backstory, you can see all the different events, any if there's any IOC information. If you wanted to click in and see all the different search results for manning threat intelligence you can do so i'll kind of go into more detail on this here in a minute if you want to see any open ports or any information um, from shodan you can do that and we call this kind of our details view which allows the analyst to really kind of drill into the context and get the full picture of, of what they need about that particular indicator now the really cool thing about Plarity is we don't we aren't just a um, a Chrome plugin or a browser based search right we work across any tool and information. Um, here is just um, is some example of firewall traffic from an old PCAP that we kind of dumped out into into Google Docs, and I'm just going to select select some information, 
hit a quick shortcut key, that's going to pull up what we call our overlay window, which is this window, which lives on your desktop. Uh, we support Windows, Linux, and Macs and Mac um, from a, a desktop application standpoint. And then we return all that information that you, that you search. So I highlighted this, hit a quick shortcut key. So what happened is Polarity extracted these seven or so or 14 or so um, different IP addresses. We looked it up in all your different data sources for you. So then you can now have that context to go through and start kind of understanding what these might be related to. And immediately you can see, of course, this is a demo for a webinar. So there's probably some malicious stuff in here, right? Um, you can see very quickly that the 70 address Mandiant has flagged as malicious. It's analysis malicious, the M score is malicious. There's a few search results. Virus total has it as malicious. Silent push has it, um, has a pretty high risk score on it. So you can kind of see that this is probably something you might really want to drill in and pay more attention to. You can click in, you can kind of see why, why virus total flight it is suspicious. It was last scanned seven days ago. So this is probably a more recent indicator that's that's out there. Um, so it might be something you really need to start digging into, seeing if it's if it's in your network anywhere or kind of drilling more, or if you're a lower level SOC analyst, like a SOC tier one, you can escalate it to that, to that next, that next year to really kind of drill in. Um, but here you can kind of click through and see what you need to do to take those next actions. And as you're scrolling, you can kind of scroll through and see what else you might need to pay attention to. You can see here that there's uh, this 182 address, it's an internal address. There's no um, no maliciousness, anything associated with it, but you do have a, a ticket associated, right? So we integrate with with ticket ticketing systems like Jira and ServiceNow, et cetera. So you can just see what tickets might be associated to see if you need to take action or if something else needs to occur. <clears throat> so the really cool thing about Polarity is, is that um, we also have a lot of different modes. I kind of mentioned before, we have our web search, we have kind of shortcut keys built into our platform. We also have what we like to call our focus mode. So here I'm going to pull up Wireshark and hit this button here, which we call focus. And I'm just going to ask Polarity, hey, Polarity, tell me what you know about this little section of the screen. Polarity is going to take a screenshot, extract that information. Again, look it, all, look it up in all of your different systems and provide you that context. So you can see here, most of this is is, um, is internal, and then you have some external stuff. So you can see nothing here is really too malicious. Um, you can see that Gray Noise has classified this as, as a riot, so you might not need to take any actions. You can probably just move on with it. But just to kind of showcase a little more with Polarity, the really cool thing is with our focus mode is you now have a screenshot of that and all the data on your clipboard. So I can just come over to a tool, I can hit paste and you have all the information that was extracted plus the screenshot. So if you need to add stuff to a ticket, if there's something information is there, you need to add to a ticket or you really want to want to further investigate it, you can do so. So um, <clears throat> just to kind of showcase the power of play a little bit more here, going to hit this button called highlight. And this is what we call our highlight mode where we're going to highlight in line on top of whatever application you're looking at. So this is Apple Notes. Um, I've pasted in the, the screenshot and you can see here these highlights start to pop up. That is our application running on top of Notes, um, <clears throat> providing these highlights so you can kind of see what player you might know. And to kind of go back to what I mentioned before with the color coordination, um, whatever you look at, the, the highlights will be kind of hued, whatever colors integrations are. So if you're things you really want to pay attention to, like Mandiant and Chronicle or some other internal tools like ServiceNow, they might be um, different colors. So you can kind of quickly understand if it's something you need to pay attention to or not. And you can hover on it, get more context. Then if you want to drill in more, you can, of course, drill in more and see if there's any other associated information about things. <clears throat> so here, just one last quick example. I'll pull up, pull up Chronicle. Um, here, looking at the dashboard, right? If I want to get more context on what I'm looking at and seeing these different IOCs um, in running highlight mode, I can just quickly kind of come in and hover on these and get the get the context needed to make whatever decision. If I want to drill in more and get more more context and information, you just hit the little search button here, and you can you can do so very quickly. Um, so now, to kind of take a step back from polarity. I'll jump into um, our Mandy and Threat Intelligence integration and kind of showcase some new, we, we've had the integration for a while. Um, we've been working with David and Stu over there for a few months now to really kind of work on the, the, new, um, <clears throat> the new integration. And I'll just kind of pull it up here, show folks some, some new things. Um, if you haven't used the new integration yet, you can see that the, the search aspect is, is one of the really important new pieces to it. 
I know uh, Mandiant has added kind of this nice new search API um, in their new version. So we've been able to kind of take, take effect or take advantage of that and allow folks to just search information in whatever, whatever information they want to search, they can do so, which I'll drone to here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but with Plarity, you can quickly kind of see what the integration does, how it, how you can work with it, what you might be able to do. And something to point out here configuration wise um, is the M score. So within Plarity and integrations, you can very quickly and, and easily kind of <clears throat> set the integration as to how you want it to work for your workflow and your team. Uh, so one thing with, with Mandiant is they have the, the M score um, that they have associated with all the different indicators. And with Plarity, we have the ability to kind of display information if it hits a certain threshold. So by default, the integration actually will only show information if it actually hits that, that really high M score threshold, um, which is set to 80 above. So if it's 80 or above, you really know, and David, if jump in here, but I'm um, 80 or above, you really know that that is something that is probably malicious. There's something definitely wrong with it. You need to pay attention to it. Is that, is that correct? Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, so the, the way our scoring will work is that we'll give you like a, a zero if we think it's benign, and then 100 is the, the maximal scale, but anything that's 80 or above is known to be malicious and definitely warrants further attention. Yeah. So by default, our integration will set it to 80. If you want to lower it just to, to have more context, like you can see here, I'm pulling in some indeterminate. There was some benign information from before. You can lower that score to just see what Mandiant might know about it, right? If you just want to get the context from it, you can still do so. You can see that this isn't attributed. That Mandiant doesn't quite know information about it, but <clears throat> that doesn't mean it might not affect you. They just don't currently have anything. Um, so you can come in and very quickly adjust that score. So to jump into a few different use cases here, utilizing the, the Mandiant Threat Intelligence and Plarity integrations, um, here is, I've gotten a report. This is just a report from a few weeks ago. Um, as you're reading through, you might not understand who a, um, a hacktivist group is. This one is called Cyber Dragons. I might not really know anything about them. I might want to know what Mandiant knows about it. And you can see here, you can come across, you can come across this, highlight it, hit that quick shortcut key, use our focus mode. Um, to pull in this information, <clears throat> and we look, you look, at, we look it up, and you can see that somebody has annotated because it's kind of another part of our platform where you can add information and kind of enrich the data. Um, say, hey, yeah, this the threat team has noticed that this group is active, but nothing's confirmed. It's speculated that this group is targeting our industry, right? That's just kind of user driven information. But if you want to see what Mandy knows about it, right? This is using that new search endpoint that they have. You can click in and see if there's anything that's coming back from Mandy and search to quickly kind of drill in and have more insights into it. So you can see here, there's some indicators that Mandiant has associated with, with Cyber Dragons. You can see that there's some reports and there's some tags kind of associated with those reports and a few more different indicators that are associated with it. So if you you wanna kind of learn more, you can of course pivot out into Mandiant and yeah, my session saved. You can pivot out into, into Mandiant and drill in and kind of really understand more. And the really nice thing with Clarity is that not only can you drill into Mandiant more, but if you want to know more about these IOCs and see if an IOC is affecting you, you can just highlight or hover on this, kind of highlight it, hit that shortcut key, and we're going to look up that indicator in, in Clarity. So you, you'll see information about the different domains that got hit on. You'll see information about the URL as well. And you can kind of drill in and get more context about these different IOCs. <clears throat> so that's utilizing the new... Um, their new search capabilities. You can of course come in here, right? If I want to know more about APT28, I can come in and look up the threat actor group, APT28. You can see that there's some exploits that are found. You can see that it's made it has identified them as an actual threat actor. You can come in and get all the context about that threat actor that Mandiant knows about. So you can come through, see all the different associated CVEs. If you want to see what these CVEs are, you can of course pivot out, look up those CVEs, you can see the different accounts and how many different things they've been associated with, any known aliases that they might be associated with. And you kind of really drill in and kind of understand that threat actor um, utilizing Mandiant's um, kind of really nice um, threat actor information like David alluded to a little bit ago. Um, showcase a few more uh, use cases here. I'll pivot out to, this is just a, a a random blog that is kind of reporting on Microsoft vulnerabilities. You're reading the blog, you come across a, a CVE. There's a CVE here. I might want to know more information about it. I can come in, highlight it. Again, hit that shortcut key. 
look it up in Mandiant and see what Mandiant knows about these vulnerabilities. You can see that there's nine different reports associated. There's one vulnerability associated with it. You can click in, drill in more, see all the different reports. Um, of course, try and link back out to the reports, see when it was when it was published, any descriptions associated. And then of course, you can kind of really drill into that vulnerability information like David was alluding to before. Um, <clears throat> here you can see any information, like when it was first published, last information they have about it. You can see what CISA, ha CISA has added context around. And then you can really drill in. If you want to know more about it, you can look at the descriptions. You can see if there's any products that are known to be vulnerable. This happens to be a Microsoft Office vulnerability. You can drill in and see all of that, all that context and kind of get a complete understanding of that vulnerability and see if it might be affecting you in, in any in any way. Um, you can also quickly come in and search for different CVEs. Um, now, just also kind of one different way to summarize information. This is to kind of uh, pivot a little bit here. We are working with uh, with some different AI aspects to try and kind of summarize data. So utilizing Mandiant Threat Intelligence as well as CISA um, here where we have a connection to Google Bard where we're taking the Mandiant Threat Intelligence and the CISA information, sending it to Bard and kind of getting a summary of what that uh, CVE is and, and what it's about from the from the Mandiant context. So you can kind of quickly um, understand and just kind of summarize all of it if you, if you wanted to summarize all the, the information. This is something that we're kind of working through and um, trying to figure out a good way to add into the platform. Um, so we're kind of exploring different LLM stuff with, with Google Bard and all the different data that's out there. Just wanted to showcase this new kind of pretty cool capability that we have going. <clears throat> um, and then to tie it up before we kind of jump over into questions, um, just one more kind of quick use case here, utilizing that um, <clears throat> the vulnerability information, right? So um, ticketing, ticketing systems, analysts might be working in ticketing systems quite a bit, right? You might get an incident that comes in from ServiceNow where somebody says, hey, this thing needs to be patched. You might not know what the CVE is. You might not know what the IP address is. Plurity helps to kind of provide all of all that context. So here you can see the CVE. You can see what information is about it. Um, you can see that uh, Mandiant has a few reports about it. You can also see any associated tickets or other information that there might be out there. And not only that, you can then drill in and see information about the IP address. Mandiant has, of course, determined this is indeterminate because this is an in internal IP in, in most cases. You can kind of have that context around <clears throat> what might be contained in your ticket, especially when it relates to the Mandiant Threat Intelligence updates and information. So to kind of summarize um, the Plarity kind of Mandiant Threat Intelligence updates, we're super excited about the about the new information and updates. Um, we've incorporated the new V4 APIs in as well. So when an analyst will run a search, they'll be able to kind of quickly get the V3 and V4 capabilities and in, in updates. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to I'm trying to find one that will actually hit here, uh, but you'll you have that that context and in, in that information from the complete Mandiant kind of API framework. Um, and then we've also added in the new CVE and vulnerability capabilities, as well as that search. So no matter where you are or what workflow you're working on, you'll always be able to have the context for Mandiant and all of your other sources that you're connected to. All right. And uh, with that, we'll kind of open it up for Q&A. Anybody has any questions? Um, no sound. Oops. Hope, hopefully you got that one uh, figured out, Andy. Apologies on the no sound aspect. Um, <clears throat> is the Mandiant integration available to Polarity CE? Not at this point in time, but um, it's something that we're that we're kind of talking about. Um, if folks aren't familiar with Polarity CE, that's our community edition. Um, it's something that that we can we can definitely look at and. Um, <clears throat> and see if we can add it into our community edition. And uh, oh, looks like you got one for you, David. How is Mandiant leveraging AI? Oh, great question. Yeah, so um, for for us, um, AI is, is really about kind of reducing the toil. I think Joe gave a great example there of like, you know, how, we, how you can use search summarization to drive those pieces down. But one of the things we're looking at um, is using it for a couple of key ways. One is, is around, um, helping customers generate and keep their threat profile updated. So one of the things that we, we know is difficult is trying to keep track of all of the actors, uh, malware and vulnerabilities that are you know, effectively attacking 
uh, industries and customers who look like you. So us being able to generate a threat profile that allows you to effectively put in a few key details, we'll generate the things and say, well, here are the suggested actors that we know um, look for people like you. Here are the vulnerabilities that they use in pieces of malware to give you a very focused overview of what it is that you want. Um, further down the road, I think we're looking more at how we look to incorporate it more generally into our platform such that you can you know do you know kind of natural language querying as you go along um and say you know things like you know you know does does this actor you know target people like me and we'll give you a natural language response really all focused around trying to optimize the analyst um, workflow um so that you get you know the the, the highest quality of information in the shortest possible time what about yourself joe how are you gonna extend yeah, yeah. So one of the ways was, like I showcased before, um, we're really looking at trying to use LLMs to, to summarize information. So um, <clears throat> how we're doing it now is just with an integration, just because we're testing kind of the, the LLMs, looking at prompts, seeing what might work, seeing how we can best tailor the information that's coming from all of our integrations. Because the thing about LLMs is a lot of them have token limits. So we have to be precise in the information we're trying to, to send to the LLM to then get summarized. Um, that's one of the major things we're really looking at. Um, we have some of our folks internally looking at the um, the summarization aspects of it. Um, and I think there was another question here for the LLM button that we clicked. Was it CISA data or just Mandiant data? Um, it's it's a currently right now for the the summarization that I that I showcased. It's utilizing a few different integrations: um, CISA vulnerability, Shodan, Virus Total, um, Mandiant Threat Intelligence, of course, um, Service Now, and and a few others. We, we're just kind of in, in the exploratory analysis phase of it right now. So we're, we kind of have to have it where we're only specifying certain integrations as we're messing with prompts to try and make sure we're staying under that, under that token limit. But this is something we're really looking forward to and trying to incorporate in the platform kind of longer term. One thing we currently do right now is we have integrations with Google Bard as well as the, the chat PTs of the world. And if you just want to ask a question, you can just ask a question, right? If I wanted to ask, well, what is... Um, say I want to say how does APT twenty eight or how does the threat acting group APT twenty eight affect polarity .io? Just for example, right? Um, we have these integrations to query Bard and that they, they basically have to ask it a question though, so. You can type in anything and then end it with a question mark and it will look it up. Um, of course, we're not gonna send the information out. So this is just saying, hey, make for sure that there's no confidential information. If you wanted to send it to Google, this does send it to send it to Google Bard. Bard does send that question there. And then um, it'll go and provide back a response. I did not test this response, so I'm not sure what it will say. Okay, there we go. So you can see here, APT28, also known as Fancy Bear, kind of provides that full context. This is available in Polarity right now. So if you wanna utilize Google Bard or ChatGPT integration, you can. But I think our future we're really looking at is kind of that summarization piece. And, um, okay. So how do the best companies leverage threat intelligence? That's yeah, a good question. I think the way we see, um, kind of alluded to it to before, was, was really around um, building and maintaining a threat profile, even if it's like a, a small threat profile, so that you understand like who who are the, the actors who are targeting you, what are the threats that are coming down towards you, so that then you can start to uh, marshal your resources to make sure that you're covered in those areas. And then once you have that good picture of like, okay, what are the threats that are targeting me and how are they coming through? You can then start to build out um, a more defensive map that allows you to start, you know, checking to see, do I have specific logs to match specific TTPs, you know, tactics, techniques, and procedures that, you know, threat actors are using? Do I have coverage in that area? Do I have protection in that area? And I guess the, the first question to always check is like, would I even know if somebody was, um, you know, exploited in that area? Do I have the logs that are coming through to be able to do those pieces? So in terms of um, the best practice, we see customers moving up the, the so-called pyramid of pain and trying to address those much harder things, which are, you know, the behavioral aspects of threat actors. Yeah, um, and then to, to add on my end, uh, I would say how they're leveraging threat intelligence is, um, <clears throat> For one, having the team set to do it, and then two, having access to the information threat intelligence and 
also seeing what is out there OSINT wise, we, we see a lot of our customers combining the power of Mandiant with what's out there OSINT wise and seeing what some of these OSINT tools are providing context wise. Um, I think that's answered all the current questions. Does anybody on the call have any, any other questions at all? No. All right. Well, David, thanks for jumping on and, uh, and doing a webinar with us today. It was uh, great learning more about Mandiant and, uh, hopefully folks can, uh, <clears throat> can sign up and get that free Mandiant Threat Intelligence. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We appreciate your time. Thank you all.